What follows is a brief construction montage. We hope you enjoyed this brief construction montage. How's it going everyone? My name is Connor O'Neill and welcome to a brand new walkthrough. WWE Smackdown vs. Raw 2004 from 2004. I said 2004 twice. I mean, that's the year the game was made. But yeah, this was actually the first ever Smackdown vs. Raw video game ever. And since I enjoyed both the Smackdown Here Comes the Pain walkthrough and also the Smackdown vs. Raw 2006 walkthrough that I did on this channel, which by the way, you can go check out. I'll leave the links down below in the description. I figure why not go back to the very first ever Smackdown vs. Is raw. I mean, look at this cover. We got Vince McMahon on the cover. It is pretty cool. I mean, you got the SmackDown blue eye right here and the red eye raw logo right here. Though this cover is a little creepy. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, what were you trying to do, Vince? Scare away the little children or get people to buy a wrestling video game? Which one is it, you crazy madman? Also, because I bought this cover back a few years ago, there's a lot of weird text logo that was not on there. I used to have another copy of this game, but I bought it like, I don't know, like five or six years back. It was like playing with my friend, doing something, like revisiting an old game or whatever. And for some reason, I don't know if that's French or whatever. If someone can tell me the language of that, I would appreciate it, but it just kind of looks funny. Dutch Mondes en Collision. Also, just to let you guys know that this game is rated T for Teen for Blood Sang. Language, language, sexual themes, themes sexuels, and violence, violence. So if any of that bothers you, if you're uncomfortable with that, please do not watch this video or this walkthrough because I can't hold you accountable. I mean, if you get caught, if you're not supposed to be watching this stuff. So I mean, I'm just saying, so yeah. I really like at the beginning of this game, you could choose either the Raw or SmackDown menu. And since I was watching SmackDown a lot more than I was with Raw, I chose the SmackDown menu and we got my baby, Tori Wilson, doing a sexy little dance there at the main menu. Look at that. She, she clearly looks like she's enjoying herself. Help me. I'm trapped in this video game. We are going to play this game on Legend difficulty. Now, in terms of creating my superstar, which you saw at the beginning, oh, there was also Sable there too, Brock Lesnar's wife, who was very fine as well. Please don't hurt me, Brock. Please don't. There's a whole copy and paste thing where you could transfer some of the experience points from one character to the other character and gain like a bunch of experience points. Well, that was actually a little bit more complicated on this game. I heard you had to have two memory cards. So I just went ahead, if I could go back for a second. I went to Shop Zone and did WWE Challenge Mode. I completed some of the challenges. Some of them were really cool. Like I did, I failed at doing the Noel 2 Bun Challenge. Some of these are actually really cool. Like people actually do this as challenges in real life, you know, with their YouTube videos. Like, I know Dan Gobbs did it with a couple of his videos. And yeah, I did a couple of this to get cash where I actually could buy experience points in the WWE Shop Zone along with a lot of other movesets which I have yet to purchase. I mean, we could still start it as a 61 overall, but God, that's, that's still a little low. First ever storyline that I remember as a kid growing so up. So you're saying that this is all my fault? Uh... This is back when WWE video games decided to do voice acting for the first time, and yeah. I'm just gonna say this right off the bat, it's a no good. No! I'm saying that you've lost half a dozen matches in the last month, and you need to focus. Half a dozen matches? God, Rene Dupree is like the Cleveland Browns in the NFL. Or the WWE. I, I messed that joke up. 
And I'm sure I pissed off a lot of Cleveland Browns fans because they've heard so many jokes about that before. Sorry, guys. I liked Rene Dupree, man. He was really underrated. Well, maybe if you'd stop distracting me while I'm in that ring, I wouldn't be losing so much. I mean, you are the one kind of bringing her to the ring. I mean, that's... I don't know, that's your fault, bro, not mine. Look at Tori's hair. It's like hidden right in her Bruh. shoulder. That's... that's not good. Distracting you? Then maybe I should just stop coming out to the ring if I'm such a distraction. Oh, yeah, man. I told you me it, monsieur. Oh, he was speaking in French, All right? He must have gotten the idea from the cover of this game. Or the back cover, I should say. What are you looking at? Well, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at one of the biggest losers in WWE and a diva who deserves a lot better. My next manager, whether she wants to offer me her services or not. Well, I would probably rather go with the first option. I mean, I did make my guy a baby face, so that's what I kind of want to do. I want to be a good, nob noble, honest baby face. Although, she might kind of like it if I treat her like a jerk. I mean, I don't know. Like, me, she thinks it's cool to be nice, or me, it's, it's nice to be a jerk. I... Women are confusing, okay? Women, please make up your mind when picking a guy, okay? Whether or not you want a really nice guy or a really mean jerk off, just make up your mind, because it's really confusing us and making our lives more miserable. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? It is kind of lame, though, how basically um, the other characters get a voiceover, but the, pe the dialogue that I choose, like... I, I'm just muted, like, just a lot of awkward silence. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Oh, uh-oh, Renee didn't like that. Listen, watch your mouth and keep your hands to yourself. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, this is back when they had the Bumblebee outfits. Bow Ray and Dave on it. I think they were managed by Paul Heyman, and there was like this really weird thing. Hold up, I gotta turn this down a little bit because I ain't trying to get no copyright claim. But yeah, this was back when there was a thing at Judgment Day where The Undertaker basically buried Paul Bearer in a whole thing of cement. It was kind of weird, actually. Man, 2004 was not a good year for WWE. Or in general, for that matter. Girl, this is my sorry for 2004, and I ain't gonna mess him no more. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen, my guy coming out, the king of YouTube, Connor O'Neill, coming out to a brand new theme song with the Randy Orton entrance because they didn't allow you to create entrances back then, to the angle by the band called Core. It sucks too, obviously, because I can't really play the background music that they actually gave you in the game. Like, you could play, like, a lot of the... It was a pretty nice, decent little soundtrack. I mean, they even had my favorite band, one of my favorite bands ever, Breaking Benjamin, and we can't even play that because of, w of YouTube's stupid copyright laws. I also said WWE, too. I almost said that, too. But, yeah, I actually played this game back off-camera, and there were actually a lot of cool mini-games that kind of enhanced the whole styles of... WWE television. This was really tough though. The test of strength battle. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, here we go. And circle. Bam! I actually won one. Wow. Unbelievable. Now, there were some new things in this game that were different than WWE SmackDown Here Comes the Pain. I mean, basically, it's the same move said. Circle was a grapple, and X was to do a strike move. Um, oh, look at this. Magnum Driver. Bam! But do you notice at the bottom of the screen, there was basically two things that you could do. It was a clean and dirty uh, momentum meter that you could do. Now that's basically, clean is obviously if you're the good guy, and dirty is if you're the bad guy. Now, you can fill up the meters in different ways. For example, if you're a clean wrestler, you can basically go up to the top rope, and I failed to do that, but you could basically dive off the top rope and uh, build up your clean meter. And once you hit the right analog stick, once your meter is filled up, you can basically, oh, nice tiger suplex. You could basically have your guy be all invincible. It's kind of like the game breaker mode in NBA Street or like the Super Mario star power thing or whatever. Nice little German suplex there. But yeah, you could reverse any attacks and literally any time that your opponent would be trying to do 
some sort of like grapple or strike on you, your guy would instantly reverse it. And you don't even have to hit any of the buttons, either the L2 or the R2 button. And playing this game back, it was a little bit easier than I remember. Now, it was a little bit more difficult playing on Legend difficulty when I was doing the season mode of Randy Orton. And I lost the first tag team match. I lost the first match in the season mode. And I was actually trying and I still lost. So, obviously I had to shake up a little ring rust there. But, um... Also, if you're a dirty superstar, if you do like low blows, if you remove the turnbuckle padding, which the computer does tend to do a lot in this game, and you're going to find out very soon that it is easy to pull off some, uh, oh, I actually did a reversal there, to pull off some grapple moves when your opponent is basically um, facing away from you. But yeah, look at that. If you if he goes right to the turnbuckle, he's building up his dirty meter, and that just gives your guy plenty of advantage to hit a grapple move. Like it's kind of ridiculous. Oh my God, Bubba Ray Dolly just did a vaulting body press. And also, once you fill up that dirty meter, you can basically um, do like a super move, or it's like a low blow or whatever. Uh oh. Oh, Bubba Ray Dudley goes through the table. Him and his brother Devon used to putting their own opponents through the tables, but there's Michael Cole and Taz. That was also a new thing. They introduced commentators at ringside. It wasn't just like the announcer table was there and there was like nobody at the commentator desk. They actually included like the commentators in the game, which was actually kind of cool. But like your dirty character would do like a super like low blow, like right in front of the ref, which should be a disqualification, but they don't call in this game for some reason. I don't know why, but you know, it's whatever. Double underhook suplex. And yeah, that's for if you're a bad guy. And you can also do like signature grapples. Oh, we're both in the yellow in terms of the torso. And uh, signature grapples, if you're a clean superstar, is another way to build up your momentum meter. So. Yeah, that's basically the game. It's basically SmackDown Here Comes the Pain, but with like a newer type of feature and definitely some newer and like cooler moves that you could do. All right, Dolly getting a lot of momentum for in terms of like putting in a sleeper. And another thing that changed too, instead of having five, oh God, oh, what a Samoan drop. I thought I was gonna go for like a strike there and I totally whiffed it and oh my gosh, this is not good. I gotta start paying attention here. If, um... Also, yeah, in terms of the finishers, there was basically, they changed it from 5 to 3, which was a little random and a little stupid, but, you know. Oh, look at me, doing the Eddie Guerrero talent. But he's not really the best in terms of momentum. So, you could still do, like, taunts on the outside, you know, especially if you're a clean superstar. Um, although that also does fill up your dirty momentum meter as well. Oh, no. No, Bubba, Bubba, but, 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 no. If he beats me because of that, oh, maybe I should have waited a little bit to build up my clean momentum meter. Oh, no. All right, so we both got finished. No, 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 no. Oh, I thought, I thought he was going to go for like a... Oh, my TV went out. No. Oh, my TV went out. No, come on. I didn't know he was going to... Oh, God. No, I'm going to... I lost to Bubba Ray Dudley on the first, wow, oh, that's, that's, no, oh, God, oh, God, this is a horrible way to begin our campaign, my TV went out again, every single time I do a PS2 game, my TV goes out at the worst possible time, are you kidding me? I can see why you're looking for a manager, <laughs> it's too bad for you that I don't waste my time on guys who can't get the job done. Nah, F that. We're restarting that. We're restarting that. 3,000 whoop who's later. Alright, so we could not beat Bubba Ray Dudley, so instead we beat Devon. They literally just gave me the other guy, so we even busted him open. Congratulations on winning your match. I was watching it backstage, and I've got to tell you, I really liked what I saw. You know, I've been thinking about getting a manager, and I think we'd make a good team. What do you say, Tori? I mean, seriously, you've had awful boyfriends before. before. First, there was Billy Kidman, and then in real life, you also dated Alex Rodriguez. Tori, look, love you, but what were you thinking dating A-Rod? I mean, seriously, of all the guys in the world, you chose Alex Rodriguez. Why? Why would that? Never mind. Oh, uh, here comes this sour 
Sour Patch Kid. Uh, and he's showing me again. This guy just... Don't you get it? She's not interested. Take a hike. If you knew it was good for you. Great acting there. Uh-oh, now we're having an intense stare down. I really hate a my guys A potentially explosive situation developing backstage and between those superstars. And the blonde again looks weird in this game. That's the thing with tomatoes, Cole. Always stirring up trouble. <laughs> wow. Taz calling Tori Wilson a tomato. I just, oh, God. Oh, 